Hi, I'm Veronica. I'm a somatic teacher and a therapist. And I would like to show you today how you could use some really simple tools to start changing the way you breathe normally. So changing your breathing pattern. Breath is actually one of the easiest and most accessible tools to change the status, the state, the mode of your nervous system, to affect your nervous system in a very direct way. Every time you're breathing faster, more shallow, more breaths per minute, it has this activating effect, which is going to trigger the sympathetic nervous system response. And every time you're breathing in a a more um, slower way or the breaths are maybe not so deep, there are fewer of them per minute and that is more likely to trigger the parasympathetic nervous system so that rest and restore, rest and connect mode. Now it's not as simple as um, trying to breathe calmly when something um, really scary happens. Sometimes this is simply not that accessible. It might not be also the, mm, the best way to do it right in the beginning. But what you can certainly do is to start breathing differently um, on a daily basis. Just switch to that way of breathing more uh, using your diaphragm without activating so much the highest uh, portion of the lungs and by default if you breathe like that for most of the time that means that most of the time your nervous system will be in that rest and restore mode now you might not be even aware of that but perhaps you always breathe with the, that higher uh, section of the lungs, just like this really small portion at the top of the lungs. You might be using lots of accessory muscles in the neck, for example, and also in the shoulders that are not really necessary for that breathing to happen. And there are ways to move your attention to, uh, to move your breath further down and to keep it in that lowest section of the rib cage. The best to do it in the beginning is to use some props which will make you feel that breath more. So first you can get something like a, a strap. It can be any kind of strap. In fact, it could be also something much wider. It could be a scarf for example and you can get yourself seated in any comfortable position it really doesn't matter how you sit so long as you are upright and actually even before you start doing anything else i always recommend to do a little bit of wiggling so it might be something like uh, rotating your pelvis forward and backward or even kind of swimming your pelvis around and it really doesn't matter how you uh, sit it it could happen when you're sitting on the chair it could happen when you're sitting on the ground on, on something that elevates your pelvis like i'm doing now and that's usually um well it does two things in this case it already kind of sends some message of uh, loosening and releasing around the abdomen and pelvic floor which are also engaged or respond to your breath but it also helps you to find yourself in space so that eventually you will land somewhere where the spine is in its neutral so it's effortlessly upright and where your ribs 
don't stick out. So if there was like an overarch in my lower back, you might think like, oh yeah, it's good. Like the front of the chest is open, but not really because in this position, the, your lower ribs flare out and it's kind of harder to breathe in this position, if anything. So that kind of returns. There is a natural curve in the lower back, but not overarched. And of course, the second thing to look at is whether there is any sense of collapse and a sign of collapse in the upper body. So it might be shoulders rounding, the chest kind of getting um, caved in. And again, the response, if you do this, again, you're going to get that overarch in the lower back. Again, it's kind of difficult to breathe freely when you're in this shape. So it's something more neutral and you can play with it for a while until you find a place where you feel there's no tension but there is also freedom. And that might be your starting point. And once you've got that, you can get your belt. And first you can actually feel for your ribcage. If you've never done that, you might not be really fully aware where does it end. So you could kind of go along the sides of the ribcage and that will be the moment when it ends and it becomes really soft and that's your waistline. So you want to be at that lower end, lower end of the ribcage. And then you can get your belt. So the belt will be touching the back of the ribcage. And you could Cross it over a little bit. So it's not about, you know, tying it. It's just lightly crossing it over. And get hold of the opposite end. Again, not really gripping, not pulling. Just kind of gently holding it with, so that the arms can stay as relaxed as possible. Uh, but it's not entirely loose. So if it gets loose, you won't really feel anything because the belt will be kind of falling down. So it's just enough of uh, contact so that you can feel the movement through that belt. But it doesn't need to be tense, you don't need to pull at it, yeah? So you can relax the arms, keep hands very gently closed. And then dive with your attention, with your awareness to your lower rib cage. And you might start feeling that whenever you inhale, the rib cage is pressing into the belt, the back of the rib cage and the sides of the ribcage. Also the front, which you might feel as the belt is crossed. So there is this 360 degree movement. And as your awareness dives there, and you have the belt for the feedback, it might be easier to move your breath down to the lowest part of the ribcage. Now both of your hands are kind of busy. But if you wanted to, just for a moment, hold the belt with one hand, you could place the other hand where your collarbones are, so kind of across the collarbones. And notice if there's any tensing 
any movement there or if it stays quite calm. So you want to keep that area, the neck, the throat, the upper chest. Hey, passive, relaxed. And the breath happening in the lowest section of the ribcage. You can stay with it for a few breaths more. And then perhaps to release the belt. But continue with the same breath. So you don't need to worry about the rhythm. It can flow the way it wants to flow. But the awareness stays down. Upper portion is relaxed. Belly stays soft. And perhaps if you dive with your awareness there, you might still feel, even without the feedback from the belt, that 360 degree expansion on every inhale and coming back towards the midline with every exhale. So it's as simple as that, that little bits of retraining are going to make you more habituated to breathe using the lower section of the ribcage, using predominantly diaphragm, which is the main breathing muscle for the respiration, rather than relying and overusing the muscles in the upper part of the body around the throat and neck. And that in turn, if you keep on practicing it, as an exercise, uh, over time, this will become your natural breathing pattern. And that will have an enormous effect on how is your nervous system working on a daily basis. So I hope that you found it helpful. And I'm going to share something similar next week. So keep your eyes open for that. I also, as usual, invite you to sign up for my newsletter with kindness, which I send out every Monday. You can sign up for it using that link below. Thank you very much.